The SM7B has always been a popular microphone, but there are two ways that this microphone has become a genuine legend. First is in the world of music and radio, and second is in the world of streaming and content creation. The SM7, and notably not the SM7B, began its prominence in radio clear back in 1973, but it quickly saw widespread adoption in recording studios everywhere. It was based on the Unidyne 3 capsule, a design element dating back to 1939, this same capsule can be found in Shure's other legendary microphones, the SM58 and the SM57. The difference here is how the capsule was tuned, focusing on a deeper, richer, low-end response that would produce a softer, more radio-friendly tone. This was further emphasized by a large resonant chamber attached to the backside of the microphone. Although the SM7 saw widespread use in radio and DJ circles, its use in the music world was no less than legendary. Some artists known for using the SM7 on their vocals include Mick Jagger from Rolling Stones, Michael Jackson, who most famously used it on Billie Jean, James Hetfield of Metallica, Bruce Dickinson of Iron Maiden, Anthony Kiedis of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Brian Johnson of ACDC, Jack White of the White Stripes, Whitney Houston, Sheryl Crow, Bob Dylan. I mean, I could keep going. Since the rise of online content creation, the SM7B, which was originally introduced in 2001 with the inclusion of a thicker windscreen, improved humbucking coil, and an improved yoke mount, has garnered international acclaim as a content creation microphone. It has become the object of desire for many podcasters, YouTubers, voiceover artists, and streamers alike for its smooth tone, and quite honestly, its pervasion in online media. What I'm trying to say is the SM7, like it or not, is nothing short of a legend that's been killing the game since 1970. So, what if I told you that this entire intro had actually been recorded on a counterfeit from Alibaba? You have no idea how long I've been waiting to do this. I've been sitting on this headphone, waiting to unbox it on camera for a month now. Take this time to get familiar with the actual SM7B sound as I do my first impressions. Ready? <laughs> they did not hide it. I thought it was gonna come in some generic box. The packaging looks exactly like the packaging that you, oh my God, that you would get from an actual SM7. Get out. Huh. That is super copyright infringement. I swear, I really did think it was just gonna come in like a generic box and it would look like the SM7, but the box is letting you know this is a sure SM7B and definitely not a fake. I mean, it's not like the Shure SM7 has like a luxurious unboxing experience or anything, but let's see how much they studied the original. That is pretty much to a T exactly like the box for the actual SM7. I might have trouble telling these apart. I might have to put a sticker on them. Here it is. It's got all the Shure SM7 stuff on the side of it. They really went all out on creating this fake. I'm not gonna lie. To the average user, you would never tell even to the average experienced user, I would add. Okay, so let's do a blind microphone test. And to do that, we're going to use today's sponsor, Ridge Wallets. That's right, I am making you watch an ad for a blind test. You have to watch it. So the Ridge wallet has become the premier minimalist wallet, so much so that they've inspired a league of lookalike brands. I personally have been using mine for the last month and I can tell you it has genuinely changed how I handle my money. It's got plenty of space for my necessary cards and the cash strap really keeps the cash I need solid and out of the way. One of the main benefits of this wallet is simply its size. Compared to my previous wallet, it's less than half the thickness, which means it fits super easily into your front pocket. Now that's great for New York City where I live because there are more pickpocketers here per square mile than I've ever experienced in my life. It's crazy. And on the topic of security, the Ridge wallet is RFID blocking. So there's no worries about getting your identity stolen through electronic wizardry. <laughs> And you know, this is actually great for a travel wallet as well for the same benefits that I mentioned above, size and RFID blocking. And they also come in really cool designs and colors. I chose the pattern that I thought was most like the Audio Haze Blue, but they make way more than this. And hey, Father's Day is coming up too, so this would be an absolutely perfect gift. If you'd like to get 15% off and also support the channel, I'll have the link in the description as well as pinned in a comment. Anyways, thanks to Ridge for being the partner in this video. So, did you guess which one it was? <laughs> okay, I'll reveal it during the sound portion of this video, but if you really didn't hear it, go listen to it again. You will hear it. <laughs> okay, I wanna start with the appearance and the manufacturing defects that I found 
in the Alibaba SM7B. This is the real SM7B that we're talking to and I will let you know when we switch. I didn't expect the box to be exactly identical and I really didn't expect all the wording on this copycat to be basically in the exact same space, in the exact same font, albeit done in a pretty inaccurate way. It's like all the little words are just like a few millimeters off and it, it weirdly bothers me. I kind of thought what I would be buying would be kind of what Pile did for the SM57 or what Behringer does for everything. Although a notable one would be the, the Yeti. I forget what they called that one. I'll put it in the post. Although, I mean, you know, how could I have been so foolish when the name is Professional Cardioid Dynamic SM7B Microphone Studio Selectable Frequency Response for Live Vocals Recording Performance. I mean, guys, it's in the name. Duh. So I'm going to... That's a new one. Did the capsule just fall out? This just in. <laughs> the, the Alibaba capsule now shakes inside of the microphone. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna start off with the manufacturing defects and the visual defects before we get to the actual sound. <laughs> so let's start off with some of the obvious stuff. The shape and the material quality of the actual foam filter is noticeably a little bit off. It's thinner, it's looser, and it's a little bit warped. And the larger foam filter that you can put on that's included in the case seems to quite literally be made out of a different kind of foam. So the exposed coated cable that you find on the counterfeit goes through the yoke, which is a really bad design because it gets jammed when you start to move it. It's also noticeably thinner, and although it might have a smoother appearance and this one has a more kinked appearance, it's because this is a much stronger, more robust cable that isn't as prone to bending. The yoke hinge actually moves extremely easily and I would imagine with a few months of use, you would actually find that the SM7 begins to tilt in the yoke itself. The yoke is actually painted a slightly different color than the chassis, the actual body, both of which are not exact color matches to the actual SM7, but you would probably expect that, right? The XLR needs to be really shoved into place whenever you're pushing this thing into the microphone. It is not a satisfying click whatsoever. The screw cap is made out of plastic and the body came with a pretty noticeable scratch along the chassis. I don't know if you can see that. The screen printing where they put the text onto the metal is noticeably worse and blurrier. And overall, the microphone feels significantly lighter than the actual SM7. Now, those are all bad things, but I will note, upon first look and upon first hold, most people aren't going to realize all these minor details. From a distance, it, it really does convey the idea that this is an SM7B. It's hard to tell. It's not a bad recreation visually and even kind of like kinesthetically whenever you hold it and feel it. Now, when you take the windscreen off of this microphone on this capsule, you'll notice something pretty interesting. The counterfeit capsule is actually about half an inch or a little bit more closer to the end of the grill. This is bad, and let me tell you why. The reason the SM7 has the recessed capsule in the first place is to mitigate what we call proximity effect. The closer I get to the microphone, you'll notice an increase in bass and low end. That's why whenever you see these movie trailer guys, whenever they're eating the microphone, they have this big, boomy, godlike voice. But when it comes to radio and podcasting, we really don't want a lot of variation whenever we're speaking. So in order to mitigate this increase in low end as you get closer to the microphone, the SM7B has a recessed guarded capsule. So under this foam, there is a recessed metal and the capsule itself is actually pretty far back. That's so whenever I get too close to it, the proximity effect isn't overly dramatic. With this design and the capsule being as close as it is, this is actually going to have a much more dramatic proximity effect than it would on a regular SM7B. Not as good for podcasting, not as good for spoken word, and not as good for a consistent vocal take. Okay, so this is a good segue into the actual sound of the SM7 and the counterfeit SM7. So does this thing actually sound like an SM7? No. No, not, not at all. <laughs> not at all. All right, I, this is the... Get ready. I'm not gonna use this thing for very long. So if you didn't notice, there's a bit of a buzz. I'm gonna use this mic for like mm, 20 more seconds so you understand how it sounds on, on spoken word. 
And by the way, if you couldn't tell, the microphone from the blind test that has the buzz, microphone two, that's the counterfeit. Microphone one is the actual SM7. So the buzz, which I will assume is the defect that is only going to, <laughs> oh my God, I can't do this. The buzz, which I'll assume is a defect that doesn't plague every single one of these, but I would imagine a large number of them, is damn near impossible to fix. This is a level of buzz that I could not really teach you how to get rid of. This is unusable. I made a vocal chain to try and eliminate this buzz and try and mitigate it as well as I could. I tried to cut 10 to 15K on a regular EQ, then I did a dynamic EQ focusing specifically on 15K. And it did help a little bit, but it mostly neutered the very small amount of tone this microphone has. I really did find it better to simply allow this hiss to occur at a low preamp level, lower than I have now, and then use a gate to cut it off whenever I'm not speaking. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Oh my God, that is so much better. But beyond the buzz, which is 100% already a reason why you should not buy the counterfeit microphone, it is characteristically simultaneously both muddier and headier and brighter than the actual SM, this one. It sounds more like a crappy emulation as, of like an SM58 or an SM57 than it does the actual SM7B. The low end is extremely muddy. It seemed like they may have been trying to go for like a V shape where we have a boosted low end and a boosted high end, but there are some crazy resonances in the low mid range that make it so throaty and not in a good way. Okay, so while they may have done a good job at recreating the look of the SM7 from a distance, they may have done a good job at recreating the feel of an SM7B at first touch, spend five minutes with it and you'll change your mind. The actual sound reproduction of the SM7B is drastically far off. Yeah, I, I really don't think the sound deserves any much more of a discussion. Clearly it's unusable. So what have we learned? Um, I don't think we learned anything. Maybe illegal counterfeits are worse and bad at what they do. And honestly, at $186, which is what I paid for it, what, that's like roughly half the cost of an SM7, you are not getting half the sound quality. You are getting significantly worse than half the sound quality. Okay, look, maybe at the very least, I satisfied your curiosity, but just don't buy an Alibaba SM7B. I thought it would be an interesting video because I haven't seen anyone make an Alibaba SM7B video on the internet. Maybe I learned why. You know what, actually, why don't we give this away? It's terrible, it's unusable, and I have no room for it. <laughs> so uh, if you'd want it, make sure you're subscribed uh, and leave a comment. Fun fact, if anybody asks you to subscribe to win a giveaway, uh, it's com a complete scam because they can't track you. So you have to subscribe and then leave a comment and then YouTube analytics will show me uh, that somebody who subscribed left a comment and it'll show that you have like a little subscription icon. But if somebody tells you to subscribe to their YouTube channel because you'll be entered to win a giveaway, they have no way of knowing that. It's a complete scam. Um, anyways, leave a comment if you want this fake SM7B. I've got no room for it. You probably don't have a use for it. Maybe it'll be a nice memento artifact piece. All right, anyways, if you'd like, you can follow me on Instagram at Real Audio Haze. You can also work on a project with me by emailing me at realaudiohaze at gmail.com. Goodbye.